Let me see. Ah. Who owns Fuel by Ramen? I think. Oh my uh, God. Ah, 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 ah. I'm getting like a weird hand cramp. Oh. Oh boy. Brunch. Hit it, boys. <laughs> Look, there's no denying it. We've gone viral again. We have. We have indeed. And it wasn't Taylor Swift this time. It was not Taylor Swift. Have we gone viral on some non-Taylor Swift stuff? I don't think so. Not on reels. Not on virals. Which is... Reels are just kind of like my scene now. Well, I'm It's like, like all I really care about. I'm starting to fall in love with the reels because we went viral yesterday mm-hmm. and neither of us fucking noticed it. And that is the ideal situation. Yeah, and then I had people uh reaching out o- over like, "Man, people aren't being so nice to you in those comments." I was like, "I didn't know the people were making any comments." <laughs> I know, same. That is legitimately all I want in life. Is like I would like to go viral without that's, that's thinking good for of us. it and without just... without it having r- ruining my day. Because, like, any time that I've gone viral before, like, it just completely consumes because your phone's blowing up. You can't really go on, like, the apps that you go on without the experience being ruined. Instagram and, like, remains ruined for me because of the fucking Counting Crows thing. Well, that's, I mean, that's because you don't have 10,000 followers. You don't have 10,000 bitches. If you hit 10,000 bitches, they get... file it away in the same, like, filing cabinet. I know. Cabinet. You've told me that. I gotta get. I can't believe they don't do that for fucking peasants like like you. How many how many follows do you think I've gotten off of the Counting Crows thing? Probably like six, five hundred. Really? So that so there is real There's value, value yeah. in bang for your buck because, um, like if I were to give anybody any advice on like doing media stuff or whatever, truly I would say, uh, build up your social media followers before companies realize. Social media followers mean don't equal like currency, money, yeah, or right. whatever. Uh, it's Famously, just, it's always good to take uh, media advice from an unemployed media person. That's right. Nah, I feel bad saying unemployed, and you I are I've not been, unemployed. I've been referring to myself, I'm just like, fucking joking with around with friends saying unemployed, and then having to be like, "No, I'm fine. I'm sorry." Actual like people are actually unemployed. Yeah, but you you get to make those jokes. It's it's a joke. Plus, uh, we all know mm-hmm. you're working harder now in that's, unemployment than you ever did. That's when you right. Were working. That's right. I so it's one of those like I I don't feel bad saying like unemployed. Oh, I'm just a bum. Blah blah. <laughs> blah. But joking and being like, hey, I'm unemployed while I'm employed and making money and like able to live life normally is. Stolen valor, but it's not valor. It's just it's stolen. Uh, stolen sadness. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's stolen. Um, what's a better way of putting it? Uh, it's like stolen Misery. fucking bad, uh, like dire situation. It's a, just a stolen situation. It is not my situation that I'm. Um, you just you just don't have full time employment. Right? Uh, yeah. If you can make if you can make unemployment jokes about yourself when you're paying your own health insurance then sweet you're right yeah although that's weird though because my goal is to have to pay my own health insurance because i don't want a full-time job it's a whole fucking thing but uh here are some of the comments that we've gotten (laughs) on this uh lovely uh reel uh well, the first off, the, there's a super long one. I know. That's big, I don't that, think we need to read the comments from our fucking Instagram reel on the podcast. Why? Most of them are mean to you. I know. <laughs> they're, mean to, they're mean to both of us. I'm just kidding. They're, they're just calling us. us cucks. And a lot of us is like, these aren't men. But the, I, the longest one is like explaining why we're such good guys for this <laughs> and not realizing that we are making fun of guys. From a verified account. Yeah. That, uh, my favorite part is that the comment section is... Yeah, I mean, you put it well, but I think that it was related to you from, or no, you told it to Colton. Yeah. Uh, it's like one quarter. One quarter uh, people didn't get it and making fun of us for it. Yeah. One quarter people who didn't get it and are praising us for it. And then half the people being like, 
Damn, a lot of people in these comments don't get it, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's the best. I love it is... people who comment on like how the comments are going. <laughs> like, know. man, these comments are wild, huh? It's also the talk be- soon. It's also the best because like if all, if like seventy five percent of them were people who didn't get it, it would make me like think and be like, damn, did we like did we miss the mark? Did we like did we miss the execution? Like literally, I think like the first or second comment that we got before it blew up was like, "Damn, you guys nailed the execution on this." And then as it's been blowing up, it's clear that we've nailed the execution because some people are like missing it, yeah. and some people are definitely getting it. So maybe this makes me an asshole. Like, rarely do I question whether the execution was nailed. It, it, I think it, it, it's more. What are people going to choose to do, or how dumb are people? Like, I it, it was going for a certain tone, and I think that it 90 to 95 percent nailed that tone. Although, it's a tone that really is, I didn't realize this till editing it was like razor thin on the line, uh, like, like just it, it, it approached the line, I think, a lot more than uh, I initially thought. Like it, it could it could easily be taken as like these guys are making fun of Barbie or like these guys yeah, are making yeah. fun of like women who liked Barbie, which it was making fun not, not to explain it, it was making fun of useless guys who Pandering. are like I'm you can't be mad at me if I say all the right things and it's like well if, say your right thing be real <laughs> yeah be real another app. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, like, that's, I, I do often, que- like, question the, maybe it's a, f- a character flaw of mine, but, like, I, if, if something it doesn't, isn't received the way that it uh, it's intended, I wonder if I, like, failed on the execution of it. Yeah, but you, though, more are, uh, and I am, too, especially with, like, real stuff, like, trying to connect with masses, but I'm more, like... I want masses to fucking change their ways. And you're like, I want everybody to have a good time. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And if they're not having a good time off the bat, then I could see how you're like, well, I didn't, if I didn't get to them in that first 24 hours, it's fucked. Also a weird thing with reels. Uh, I, I, I fucked this up. I shouldn't have just given up on it after a couple of days because a lot of times it, it does take a couple later, of later. Yeah. The, uh, the count and crows one, did like well with my friends and I saw that like my friends were sharing it or people that knew me were sharing it. And then like three days later I was like, what? Oh, damn. Got like a million it, views. It was like, yeah, it was like, uh, 10,000 at the end of day one, like 20,000 at the end of day two. And you're like, okay, so next day we'll be like 300,000. Damn. Yeah. It's weird. The algorithms algorithm is weird. Reels, reels are Reels fucking fascinate me though. I get lost in them. I got a. I have one planned that is so long I can't even make it a reel. It's gonna have to be a TikTok. It's like uh, because TikToks can be ten minutes, right? <laughs> oh boy, I might use up all ten. <laughs> I've watched a ten minute TikTok before. It's, a, so it's crazy. I, it's that who's that fucking guy who I don't want to hate on him. I've never really laughed at him, but he's like this comedian, and he's always all comedians now. By the way, all of their TikToks are just them doing crowd work. Have yeah, you this? yeah. There's never them doing a bit or a joke, which is. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I. Me. I mean, I see jokes for sure, but there's I see a jokes lot from of crowd that guy, work. You know who I like, and I, he's a hockey guy. The guy that uh, he has a mustache and he's very like dainty, and he holds the mic like this, and he's older than us, and he has a mustache, and he you could just tell like that guy definitely has a wife. Uh, <laughs> okay, he. Uh, He'll post himself doing jokes. And I, I, mean, like I think that. a lot of people post themselves but, doing jokes. You might be caught up in the crowd work algorithm. There's a lot of I'm crowd work, though. Deep into the crowd work algorithm. Nobody does crowd work like Stavros, though. Who's this fucking guy? You guys would know this guy. He's this kid. He's probably like five years younger than you. And he's kind you of. You said he's older than us. No, the Didn't hockey ju- guy. Yeah, you just said he's older. No, than I'm us. talking. No, no, no. I said, I, I said. I roll the tape back. I'm, I said the guy that does jokes is a hockey guy, and he's older than us. But I yes. said all my TikTok things okay. are this famous comedian, kind of. But I've never seen him like touring or doing anything. 
but he gets all these he and uh, every sponsored thing you see he's involved oh in. i know you're talking about matt, matt rife matt rife yeah, 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 yeah we got yeah, there yeah. yeah like i watch the videos and sometimes they're okay sometimes he's like fucking really mean to the audience yeah i don't i don't don't love that guy i, I don't think that he's that funny but i also i did see a clip of him doing crowd work that is like maybe the funniest clip of crowd work I've ever seen where it's like him talking to a, a mom mm -hmm. and it just like goes fucking wild. She has like squeaky breast implants. It's fucking, oh, wow. it's super weird. It's a, uh, that, that is like one of the best clips of crowd work I've seen. But other than that, like Matt Reif doesn't really do it for Are me. Are you but caught I, up in the uh, Bobby Althoff, Althoff algorithm? No. Oh, okay. So it's this young woman. She, yeah, oh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know who the, oh, she I didn't know was her name. Once a uh, a mom TikToker, okay, started off in that space, and that's hilarious because the only clip that I've seen of her is the one with Drake, where she leaves her child on their first birthday to go interview Drake. Oh, so I, I'm pissed about the that Drake one because she does they she interviews him in a bed. Yeah. That was that's a pod that that was like a show and a podcast yeah. like five ten years ago. Yeah, Father John Misty was on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just what, it what was are we with doing? it was with uh, an older woman, like a really old woman. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, no, nah, she was like probably there is there is a uh, a an old famous woman who used to do. Uh, I think she has since died, but I think like her her big thing was that like. Barbara she loves Walters. talking about sex and uh, like is like big uh, like very sex positive and she does like her interviews in bed. Oh, so different person because okay. this person wasn't doing a lot of sex talk in the bed, just doing normal interviews okay. and the setting was uh, uh, a bed. A anyway, uh, the the Bobby Althoff Althoff algorithm is you get a bunch of her videos and then you get a bunch of videos of people saying who is bobby althoff and where did she come from because there's massive uh, uh accusations she's an industry plant oh interesting because she i mean did you ever see no her no before, like, no two clue weeks ago? no clue and now you probably see her quite a bit and i and, and like, her clips are funny her clips are funny but she's like, not super funny she, that's what i was gonna say yeah like like yeah like she's not super funny she's not still on the show but they like the situations that she finds herself in in these clips are funny, and what? she gets her guests to be funny. Right. Uh, one of her videos the, from back in the day, I guess, was she went to an open mic and told all the open mic comedians, uh, stop, this is really uncomfortable, you guys aren't funny. And I was like, I fucking hate this person. Yeah. This per and, and I've Don't love that. Been, I've done open mics, and I've been to open mics, and a lot of it is cringy. And stuff, but There's people trying, man. But r right, like some open mic night means that you're not doing this for a living for the most part. Right. <laughs> if I were up after her, I would have been like, "Hey, uh, I'm gonna do five minutes on how mean that person was." <laughs> Jesus. She uh, she does remind me a little bit of the uh, the chicken chop girl, but like the chicken Emily chop girl. Goldenberg? Yeah, she's, she's way great. funnier. I mean, yeah, no, she, she is, is like, like a star. star. Yes, totally. <laughs> yes, huge, huge fan. Do you follow her? I do. Yeah. She uh, her relationship with Andrew Garfield is my favorite fucking thing in the world. She's great. She also does the personality uh human being Instagram thing well because she'll post like, "Hey, I'm at a concert. How fucking cool is this?" And then also post mm -hmm. like crazy ass cool shit. Yeah, her and uh she was on the Sunday conversation with uh yeah. Caleb, yeah. which has gone all which is uh maybe peaked. Uh but it's still, I mean, he's still like Caleb's the funniest the person. Best, in the, yes. Yeah, he's he's the the best. I feel like they're the guests have. If I having could, to do it with that regularity is maybe affected. Uh, yeah, probably, and also like because it was like it was batting a thousand for like two years. And I think when it, get, it gets that well known, like the guests like feel like they have to play it up. And right. It's when when you kind of like when. When guests are like trying to be something on yeah. the show and fit into like a mold and fit into the box, Truly it kind of spoils. I'm a realizing bit. What, the reason I think, and I, it's still like a B plus. The reason it's maybe dropped off a little for me is the editing. It's gotten, I think, too. You know, it gets too into tight. like the uh, the camera shakes and every time somebody moves. But I understand that you do you try to keep shit uh, fresh. Uh, my big algorithm story, okay. by the way. Oh, I got an algorithm story too. I want to get to. Uh, and I was talking to, I think I might have quickly told you this, 
I've told a lot of people this, and they've <laughs> basically all said the exact same thing has happened to them, which is crazy. What? Uh, you know when you go to search something on Instagram? Yeah. That's where the algorithm gets a lot hornier. Uh, like all I thought, the stuff I thought you said on like the explore page. I think that the is that what that's called? Yeah, like what? Yeah, when like you go, when to, you go search, to search bar, there's like below yeah, it, like, yeah, 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 and it just is assuming that you're being a big horn dog. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it throws horny stuff at me, mm -hmm. but for a while it had been throwing videos of Haley Williams. Oh yeah, you told of me this story. Dancing on stage, like while performing mm -hmm. and not doing seductive dances or anything, singing while doing it, just like clearly performing. And I was like, I, I wasn't clicking them. And then I was like, are they giving this to me because it's like a horny thing or something? Like, what could she possibly be singing that is going to trigger some horny algorithm thing? Mm -hmm. So I watched it and she just says the coolest fucking dances in the world. And then I was like, what's this song? And now I'm on a fucking Paramore kick <laughs> in the least horny way ever. But I think I'll that tell you what, that sounds like an industry plant. Yes. Sounds like whoever like Paramore's label is like right. they'll give Instagram a hundred million dollars and just spam everybody with Haley Williams. Videos. Which famously Paramore's label never afraid to uh Pull the wool over <laughs> folks' eyes. Yeah. Famously, Paramore wasn't a real band. Yeah, you love sharing that story. <laughs> Not they, in like they a, just really liked Haley they, Williams and they just like gave her a band and they, was like, you guys I, are a band. It must now. have been, let me see, who ah. owns Fuel by Ramen? I think. Oh my uh, God. Ah, 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 I'm getting like a weird hand cramp. Oh. Oh boy. Okay. There it passed. That was fucking really weird. Damn. It just like you ever had that? Like where your finger just fucking like straightens out? No, I get uh I get it in these bad boys. Okay. In the I, I usually get it in my fingers or my toes. Man, that's no good. Um the uh, Warner signed Haley Williams as a kid, and they were like, You're awesome. You're a star. Uh let's have you be in a band. And I think that the people that rounded out the band were her friends and people that she'd played with or whatever, but she was signed to Warner and they were and the part of the deal was they were like, we're going to put you on Fueled by Ramen, which is our cool indie label, and you guys are going to work your way up, and you're going to hit it big. And that's what happened, which I'm totally on board with that yeah, because we still ended up getting Paramore, right. and those songs fucking rock. I'm, yeah, like my last maybe two weeks of my life, I've gone from like, I know Paramore is good, I just don't really listen to them. To now, I'm like a Paramore guy. Wait, so so I'm confused. I thought I thought the story was that they just like took musicians and like stuck them with Haley Williams. It was like you guys are a band to package them. I think they were from the same town as her somewhere so that's in Tennessee. Like, that's like a that's a band. They were just like you. you they just like egged her on to have a band, but they weren't on. Uh, they didn't have the same deal as so she was signed to okay. this major label. And uh, they were signed to this lesser thing. Okay, and then I think eventually, so they were essentially like touring musicians, like essentially, but like a, like officially part of, of the band. Yeah, there was just a little trickeration, but yeah, I think that sort of stuff happens more often than we think. But uh, Haley Williams rocks. I'm just like a in a totally non horny way, just a Haley Williams guy. <laughs> okay. She's, Fucking great. And Brian Robert Jones is playing with oh, them these fuck days. Oh, fuck yeah. I love Brian Robert Jones. Some of the dancing videos have Brian dancing too. All right. Well, then they sound way cooler now. Uh, yeah. My algorithm story is that I uh, saw a video of a jet yesterday and it was very cool. It was, it was essentially like a video of. Remember in Top Gun 2 where that jet basically goes like vertical mm -hmm. and then shoots upwards? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was a video doing that IRL. And I was like, damn, that's cool as fuck. And ever since that, now my timeline, this is Twitter, by the way. Now my, or sorry, X. Uh, it is now all just like jet videos. And I'll tell you what, I'm watching all those jet videos. They are cool as fuck. Damn. I'm, that's in, my, I'm sick. in my dad era. <laughs> no, I was going to say, that's like some like kid shit. You're like basically playing with trains on social media. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like, Considering where the algorithm has brought me in the past, I'm very happy with just opening up X and seeing all these jets. That's awesome. The, uh, X is in a weird place. I mean, it's always in a weird place, but with uh, they've changed the name of retweets to reshares. But if you go to retweet something, 
It's like, do you want to retweet this? Yes, it's and like it, it's a, 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 the most half branding thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's such a mess. I also can't take it, that. I thought about this yesterday. Like X or like new Twitter reminds me of the seaport in Boston, where it was like it was literally just like a garbage dump before, and it was just all fucking trash, and there was not much of value, mm -hmm. but it was it was okay. And then they tried to make it hip and cool and like really sleek. And now I just miss the garbage. Yeah. And it. I don't want to go there. I don't know. I've been too hard on the seaport. I was a big uh, the shout at the top of my lungs. It has no soul. It doesn't. And, and it does have it, no it soul. Does, but does, like, there's a cool lot of places there. have no soul. But there are some things to do there. And I like some people there's over a there. Lot of, and that's the biggest problem. There's so much cool shit to do there. But it fucking sucks. Whenever being something there. opens in Boston now, it opens. There. I know. We were. There's no fucking space anywhere else. Yeah. Oh, we went to a Jaws thing last week. Uh, because the Alamo Draft House is coming to uh, Boston. Yeah, it's coming to the seaport. And we uh, talked to some very nice Alamo Draft people. I think we're going to do some stuff with them at some point. And most importantly, we watched a screening of Jaws. Someone asked me the other day, they were like, hey, how's that movie hold up? I was like, it's just the best fucking movie. Yeah, it, like, it's a great that movie. That movie is never going to lose steam. There's no reason why that movie would ever lose steam. Man, my guy... Uh, Shit, why can't I think of his name? Mr. Holland's Opus. Richard Dreyfus. Yeah. Just every single thing he wears in that movie, he's so fucking hot. I feel like Jaws is like the the fast car of uh, of movies mm. where like that movie should never be remade. Fast car should never really be covered. Yeah. Doesn't need it. It Just sucks though. Do not. Do not touch it. Having thoughts on things is good because it's healthy to think and it prevents you from getting certain diseases when you get older. But it sucks when you have said, hey, the Luke Combs version of Fast Car is obviously pretty bad. And then you see that your friends are going to the concert and posting stuff about it and you're like, fuck, they know, not that they're probably losing sleep over it, but they're like, they know that I said the thing they like <laughs> is for fucking toddlers, but I don't think they're toddlers. God damn it! Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, Luke Combs though, like, is is fine. I yeah, just, I just, like I, a nice guy. I, I don't think that the uh, the cover was necessary. That's the only thing. I think it was a little much, and that we didn't need it. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, "Talk to Me," which is a uh, crazy ass new film that's got everybody excited. But first, uh, there is a trailer. For Saw X, which I don't totally understand the X part of it because ten. they're past 10. Really? I thought they were... No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, Saw Logically, 3D, it would be 7, 8, 9. No, Saw 3D, Jigsaw, uh, Spiral... <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, well, the, I, I mean, uh, Jigsaw and Spiral probably don't, like... Those are probably offshoots. No, you know, no, I mean, Jigsaw is, like, for real. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this is ten. I don't think it's great that I'm like, this has to be, like, the 14th one by this point. I mean, I can't believe we're still doing Saw movies. I really, really can't. Uh, this is doing the trick. I don't hate the premise of this one, but uh, it's got a little... I think it's Saw it's It's so six. cheap. The premise is so cheap, or, like, the... The timing of it or whatever is such a fucking cheap play. You told me it takes place between, between Saw 1, one and, and 2. two. Yeah. And they bring back uh, John. They bring back John Kramer and they bring back uh, Amanda. Yeah. So they were like, okay, we want to make another Saw movie, but nobody gives a fuck about Saw anymore. How do we go back to a time when people cared about Saw. And they literally just went between the two movies that people actually cared about. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of which one this uh, is, but we've talked a few times. Let me see. Uh, Umbrella Insurance Saw. That is Saw 6. Uh, that's Umbrella the one where they, insurance? they go after the insurance company. Okay. Because John Kramer just wanted his uh, to live... And the health insurance company was like, no, sir, you're old. You got cancer. And uh, so then he started killing. He like, spent a lot of time 
tackling uh, the American health insurance. Yes. Uh, so then he goes after like low level employees, yeah. like, like security guards at this insurance company. And then he's like, oh, and last but not least, then we kill the head of the company. And I'm like, not that you should be killing anybody, but maybe I'm thinking that there. if anybody <laughs> has to pay some price, maybe like a lawsuit or something else instead, I'm not going after. Remember, he he puts like two low I level employees. I did not employees. see uh, six. Do not ask uh, me if I remember. One has, uh, he does something with like air. And like there's a certain, only a certain amount of oxygen and he has to choose between like uh, an employee there who smokes and an employee who doesn't smoke. And one of them ends up dying. And I'm like, cool. Nice point you made there. <laughs> Neither of those people needed to fucking die, man. It's uh, I mean, it's it's necessary. Um, next necessary costs. I would not say necessary. Well, John Kramer would. This one, though, uh, is is similar because this is set between one and two, and uh, Jigsaw has his cancer diagnosis. They tell him there's nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. But there is this little experimental thing in Mexico. So he goes to them, and they say, hey, we changed your life, blah, blah. Folks, they rip him off. Yeah, he goes two hundred and fifty thousand dollars down the drain for <laughs> that, old John Kramer. That's and you're gonna die. That's a bad feeling. I mean, who gives a fuck? It's not, you lose two hundred fifty grand and you die. He's probably trying to leave that to Jill. Who's Jill? His wife. She's bad. She's like she's like bad, like thick bad, or like she's like or like bad in the head. No, she's. I mean, she is she a baddie or is she bad? I think she tries to kill Costas later or, or Hoffman. Hoffman. Uh, she <laughs> tries to kill you, Hoffman later. The you name, no names in the Saw universe is crazy. Oh, yeah, man. You want uh, you want Detective Riggs? You want uh, Detective Matthews? Oh, my God. Man. Uh, th Dude, uh, the amount of space. Agent being... Strom? He has to do a uh, tracheotomy on himself. The uh, amount of space being taken up in your brain by, like, names by from Saw the 24. And <laughs> yeah, in the 24 universe. <laughs> Oh, knowing every character from 24. Yeah, we were talking 24 a few weeks ago in a car or something. And you were like, who's that guy? Oh, yeah, me. I was like, it's Milo. <laughs> yeah, sorry. How are you not going to know Milo? They fucking bring him back in one of the seasons and he gets killed. Uh, but uh, this doesn't look like a bad movie. But it just looks like it's kind of the same thing where he's like going after it's the same people shit. who rip him off. Yeah, it's they literally brought this guy back to life so they could play the hits. If there were any film franchise that should be using, and I don't love the de-aging stuff, but they've gone back in time with uh, Tobin Bell's character like 400 times yeah. during the series. <laughs> Saw came out in like... What, like 2000 or some shit like that? Like mid-2000s, yeah. It is... He did not look that old. Oh, he looks super old. By the way, Tobin Bell uh, plays uh, Peter Kingsley in season two of 24. Oh, boy. I want the chip, Jack. Get the chip from Jack. Uh, did you notice the song they played in this one? Oh, uh, um, I did notice it, but I didn't like. I didn't register it. It's been in your life recently. What is it? It's The Air That I Breathe by The Hollies, which is the song that Radiohead got sued for uh, when they made Creep. Okay. Which it's funny. Like, they did... So, uh, Social Network mm -hmm. had that, like, chilling rendition of Creep. Yeah. I get doing that with Creep. I'd never heard it with uh, The Air That I Breathe, but maybe they were like, yo, this is going to get... This is going to tell people that we're legit. Oh, my God. It's... Uh... It's. I have no interest in seeing that movie. Oh, you're gonna have to. I mean, no. you, you saw Spiral, man. I know, but like Spiral, Spiral, it didn't look as like as um, torture porny as this one does. An issue, a, a question I have about this. This is looks like, very, very torture porny. Is he going to be worse at making the traps in this? Because it, he should be. If this is between one and two. Right? Like worse? Like what do you mean? Like like the harsher? Because like when it gets to like six and seven, they're outrageous. And there's yeah. one that's like you gotta ride a motorcycle and there's razors and all this stuff. If this is set between one and two, it stands to reason he's still making these things pretty crudely. 
Yeah, and I mean, like like I said, like it, it seems like they're going back in time and playing the hits, which I guess does make sense from a you know like a timeline standpoint. Like you know, he's that's what he was doing in one and two, so mm. it would stand to reason that he'd be doing similar shit in those. Yeah, but like up to his old tricks. Yeah, but it it also like it the, the trailer shows a lot of like blood and yeah. and. Just things that I don't want to see. I Even the, like it's bad in the trailer when you're like doing the uh, yeah, and I don't want to see that movie. Watching that trailer and seeing uh, Shawnee Smith who plays Amanda, I was once again struck by I can't believe Pete never watched Kramer, uh, not Kramer Becker. Yeah, no, that's that that is such an up your alley thing. It's dancing. You're a Cheers guy. Yep. He plays a fucking miserable guy who smokes one cigarette a day. Shawnee Smith is great in it. It's got the guy who plays Mocha Joe. In... Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's one of the stars. Of it. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's got this guy, Jake, who's awesome. And Shawnee Smith's character is a scream. Okay. She works at uh, his office, but she's just, she'll be like, oh, sorry, Dr. Becker. That patient died because I was too busy having sex with my boyfriend. And I watched Jesus. it when I was like a kid, so I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck don't, yeah. Don't let John Kramer get a hold of that lady. No, John Becker and John Kramer, I think, would have... Uh, I, I'd like to see their conversation <laughs> about working with uh, Shawnee Smith. Uh, let's do Talk to Me. Talk to me from Danny and Michael Philippou in their feature directorial debut is a supernatural horror film centered on a group of Australian teenagers who use an embalmed hand to give their bodies to spirits. When the party trick goes too far, Mia must fight for the truth while Riley must fight for his life. As of this recording, it has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Talk to me has a runtime of one hour and 35 minutes. I didn't sneak this into the synopsis, but this film is distributed by A24. I don't know what your experience was with it, but I feel bad for this movie because I think that this is a fine gourmet level Blumhouse type of thing that got overhyped by certain people I follow on social media, and that's not the movie's fault. Um, yeah, like, I, I definitely agree that, like, the movie didn't do anything wrong, and it's a classic case of a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes does not mean that this movie is a 95 out of 100. Do I, I am I, after seeing it, am I surprised that it's a 95% out of 100 on Rotten Tomatoes? Not really, because it's a good movie, and it does a lot of things well, but that attached to also the hype that it's getting from certain people and like oh this is like the best directorial debut since uh barbarian, since barbarian right. uh that kind of sets the bar extremely high and i don't think that the movie meets it but it is a good movie yeah i forget who tweeted that uh making the comparison to barbarian uh just as far as it being a great directorial debut and with all due respect to the the philippus zach Kreger should be offended by that to be like barbarian i thought was an incredible movie like a great i think like crossover whether you like yeah, horror I agree. or not really like really i think barbarian movie. was like a 95 out of 100 right, right. <laughs> yes. I, I think that uh, i wanted it nominated for best picture yeah i uh, was disappointed it wasn't but i also like wouldn't i i think that the directorial debut aspect of the conversation is about like secretly about how cool of a story is. Cause I don't know if you read up on the directors, no, but like they worked behind the camera for a long time. Uh, they were YouTubers. They made short oh, films on yeah. YouTube and then like got a chance. Like they got the ball in their hands and they did this well with it. And so I think that's a very, very cool part. That being said, I don't think that this movie fucking reinvents any sort of wheel. Exactly. It just does a lot of things well. It looks good. It's scary. I thought the performances were great. Uh, it's jump scares don't feel it, cheap. They're earned. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. all very earned and make sense. And if there's any point where you say, Jesus, it's to yourself for not knowing that that was coming. It's a good 
scary movie. I thought that the lead, uh, Sophie Wilde as Mia, was awesome. But I thought that everybody was good. Everybody I, was really I thought good. the group of teenagers. Who's the kid? Uh, there aren't pictures attached to the... I, I think it's uh, Max... Kid with the weird face. No offense to me. That was super mean to that actor. <laughs> but just uh, he has a lot of character yeah. in his face. Yeah. I thought he was great. I thought the kid who brings the hand mm-hmm. was good. They're I, all good. Its yeah. opening sequence was very, very uh, good to draw you in. But for a movie about a hand, this was not as gripping as I wanted hey, it to be. Hey, I see what you, you, know? you did there. Yeah. Like, there were points where it just no. kind of felt like it was leaning into... It's a supernatural film. Trust us. Well, I no, I mean like I don't I didn't get that feeling from it. I was more I guess waiting for like what's when's the crazy shit? Like when is the crazy shit happening? Like when is this going to sort of blow my mind? And it never does because it it's it really is like a movie that you've seen before, a horror movie that you've seen before, but it's just like it's more well done. You know, like it it almost feels like X in that way where X is like a slasher and it's just a really well done slasher. And there's like a lot of care put into it. The performances are really good. Um, But like you've seen that before. You know what I compare it to? It's a better version of Truth or Dare. Yeah, you called it a gourmet Blumhouse movie and like. I've been using gourmet a lot to say <laughs> yeah. better version of something that's good. Yeah, you said Truth that. Truth or Dare was fine. Yeah, and like, uh, I don't. I think that that's like a little bit disrespectful. Like, it's an A twenty four take if on a Blumhouse movie. If you're movie. a talk to me head and you say and you hear me say this is gourmet, uh, Truth or Dare, you're gonna be like, fuck off. Yeah, that's right. Super mean, but it's it's an it's an A twenty four version of a Blumhouse movie. Yeah, but there is I feel like there's been some of those where you're like, is this A24 or Blumhouse? Which as somebody who likes A24 and Blumhouse movies both a lot, I don't think that's a bad thing, but I think that Blumhouse or uh, A24 heads would be offended I, by I think it. that if you go into talk to me expecting it to be like a hereditary or midsomar yeah. level like unsettling horror movie, you're probably going to be a little bit d- disappointed because I don't think it has at, as much under the surface and under the hood as those movies do. But this is still a – like I'm not a horror guy. You're not a horror guy. I thought that this was a very good horror movie. I got to say uh, the person who gets it worst in this movie – and people die in this movie. But the person who gets it worst is the boyfriend of – uh, the, I guess, co-lead, Sue's boyfriend, this character only exists for them to be like, this guy doesn't kiss anyone. What's he even doing here? Yeah, sure, we'll bring him to the party, but I'll tell you what's going to happen when we walk in. They're going to say, why is he at the party? This guy's lame. And every scene he's in, it just all and it does is just bang you over the head with, this guy don't do nothing interesting. I don't know if I would say that he gets it the worst, but he is definitely made out to be Riley like a wet a blanket time. yeah I'd so. say the, the, the character of riley doesn't do amazing yes movie. uh also mia definitely a mia's wet dad the, the boyfriend is a wet blanket i mean it's it's a uh, like I, he, th- I think he's a he, he's comfortable in his skin she he shows up to the house and uh the mother is like do you have alcohol in your car and he's like of course not i don't drink i'm like king <laughs> he gets his toes sucked and he's not into it he's He's yeah. a bit of a kink shamer. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to... Th- th- this film is uh, centered on people too young for me to comment on what they should be doing on how or how they should be living their life. But he's just taking it moment to moment. <laughs> he has a girlfriend. You wake up and those duddigs are in somebody else's mouth. What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, shout out that guy. He reminded, He's the Amos of this movie, if you've ever seen uh, Chicago. I have seen Chicago. Amos, yes. played by uh, uh, John, John C. Riley. Riley yes, yeah. I was going to John C. McKinley. Wouldn't have could have worked. Would have been a better movie. <laughs> yeah. He would have just been like, uh, would just been super homophobic to all the characters and been like, "Hey, Dorothy." What are you... <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Positives uh, and negatives of this film. I would say uh, the pacing is fantastic. It Ooh, is. Uh, it keeps you keeps you engaged the entire time. It's also like ninety two minutes or something like that. A real get in, get out, and does its thing, but also it just does everything pretty well in terms of presentation. Uh, 
it's scary and I don't like to be scared too much and this doesn't scare you too much but given that it's about possession or spiritual possession you probably should know that going in I I just thought it was an excellent lead performance I'd like to see wild in more stuff uh, what do you have for negatives um it's very I guess like the the surface level thing like it's pretty surface level it's story just story isn't great yeah like the it's Again, like it doesn't reinvent the wheel. It gives you a lot of shit that you've seen in a horror movie before. Even like your description of, yeah, it's just spirits taking over a living person's body. Cool. You've seen that a million times. Doesn't live up to the hand. Yeah. Does not grip you perfectly. Does uh, not grip you the nice right way. I would also say that uh, there's some gross out stuff. That I wasn't particularly amazed or like <laughs> thrilled with. Yeah, but, but that's all... that's a taste thing. Like yeah, it, true. I, there are people that will like that stuff, and like it's probably people that love horror movies. But there was some gross out stuff that I could have done with, done without. All right, take me to Letterboxd. Uh, I gave it a three and a half out of five stars. I gave it a three and a half out of five stars too. If I hadn't heard all this stuff about what a world rocking movie it was, I would have gone to this and then ran out and told people like, Hey, look, I know horror movies aren't your thing, but this one's pretty good. Right. I, my takeaway would have been like, I don't typically like horror movies, but I really liked this one. And I would probably say it's no barbarian, but to correct. Check this out. Yes. Yeah. Well, so if watch this, if you'd like, we'd both recommend it fine, but we'd really recommend uh, barbarian and scrubs <laughs> <laughs> and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Sure, do that. We have some only in Boston news. So you seen what's happening at Sullivan's Castle Island? No, what? I noticed this I firsthand, Sullivan's. and then I heard about it on the news. Okay. Uh, all the tables. So Castle Island is a place in South Boston. It's right on the water. And uh, I rollerblade there. People run there. You take your family. You take your dogs. Incredible you're establishment. going to run a lot into poop while you're there but it's just a great park to go walk around and be on the water and there's beaches it's lovely and the uh the the tip of the iceberg there so to speak the crowning achievement there is uh, a food stand called sullivan's oh it's a restaurant it's a fast food to yeah, go yeah, yeah. The, you get your burgers you get your fries a lot of times i'll do a rollerblade followed by a frap it's essentially like sonic on the water but it's, like way better than Sonic. It's the best. And it's always going to be so rewarding because it, you always have it while having a nice day outside. Yeah. Or if you just went for a run or did something, it's truly amazing. Uh, I was going there after a blade recently and I thought, oh, shoot, it might be closed because all of the tables were taped off and they were big. Hey, get the fuck out of here. Things put up all over the place. Okay. I walked in. There were still people there. They were ordering. They were getting their food. Uh, later heard on the news, Sullivan's has had to not have any of their outdoor seating because seagulls are so aggressively swooping down and trying to eat people's food. And it makes me wonder... Did seagulls just figure out they could do that? Why <laughs> sure. have they always been? I, I know that like you say like, oh, cover your food, watch out for seagulls. But this is like a problem. They're like dive bombing. Damn, I had not thought of this before, but it is crazy that it has taken birds this long. Like to just take to, all our to, stuff. To, yeah, to develop some like fucking testicular fortitude and know that they can get away with shit. Like you just fuck up our day and then fly away. What are we going to do about it? Uh, from CBS Boston. The headline is, quote, they're vicious, end quote. <laughs> Aggressive seagulls for Sullivan's Castle Island to suspend outdoor dining. South Boston. Sullivan's Castle Island in Southie is a staple of the blah, 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 blah. Caution tape now surrounds the uh, customers looking to sit and enjoy their food will have to find seats somewhere else for now. Get out of here. Caution tape now surrounds the outdoor seating and signs sit on every table that warn, beware seagulls. The restaurant has a policy. 
Quote, if you get attacked by a seagull and they take your food, we will remake your order for free. Oh, this shit. is the general manager, William Cummings, told WBZ TV. Uh, bad choice of words, William Cummings, because what if old Petey here gets <laughs> that dog surgery thing that I was guy literally got, just thinking that in my head. Really? I was like, yeah. One of us just gets that <laughs> yeah. surgery. And, and you're fucking free food from Sullivan's for the rest of our lives. Uh, that's inc- <laughs> until they change the policy. But maybe right. they're going to be a little slow to do that. Dude, yes. Let's that was, take that $20,000 It's so gamble. fucked up that I was literally going through my head as you were reading that i was like well you could definitely fucking fashion a uh or even like an animatronic seagull but like, oh shit it, it fucked up my day they're like oh this is the fucking guy with the remote controls here again <laughs> 55 hot dogs 55 burgers 55 fries 55 fries. <laughs> that'd be just amazing. a drone seagull just absolutely fucking up my food after i've finished it <laughs> like press a button like what sound do seagulls make it's, bah, bah. it is crazy that birds we have to make the seagull from memory we can't look up what they look like or what they sound like it is crazy that birds have not evolved to like understanding where like the good food is and that they can just take it if they want and we can't do anything about it take it all take people's chains Bring them to other people who will resell the chains, <laughs> yeah. and then provide Birds you. Birds could rule the world, man. If they just had, uh, if they had more evolution abilities. Have you ever believed the uh, Birds government? Birds are real. Yeah, the yeah. Have you ever believed that? Uh, n- not really. But now that I'm like discussing the idea of creating a drone, seagull, now that like, so, like we've thought of yeah, it, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. I think that like I think it's very possible that there could be like bird drones. What if this is an insurance scam? Watch out. John Cramer might get you. What if this is Sullivan's uh, trying to double, d- somehow make some insurance money off this? They're <laughs> making these birds that are scaring people away. Or maybe they're trying to uh, drum up Depressed. a value because or, they're like, Yo, you know how hard it is to get a Sullivan's hot dog? You got to fight off it. birds. Yeah, and no. man. I don't know. I feel like that hurts business more than it helps, but it, they are in the news. They like are, they, they're getting free publicity. There's no, no press such is thing. Bad press. Yeah, exactly. I heard it on the radio. I saw this story. Let's see. Uh, this past weekend, the policy created a bottleneck of orders. There you go. Shout out uh, the Bear episode seven. Yeah, a real uh, machine situation. So many bold birds were swooping in to steal customers' meals. Cust- uh, Cumming says the restaurant couldn't keep up with remaking old. Oh orders no, that kind of with the line of new orders too. I mean, that fucking sucks because during all this, I fucking went in there. Did and you? Was like one fucking rep, <laughs> please. They're like, dude, just get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, I mean, like, so it, it's it it's. It's unlikely that they're doing this to drum up, uh, like, demand. But we can't rule it out. Can't rule it out, but it's unlikely when the demand is remaking shit for free. <laughs> like, that sucks. People will think it's extreme, but it's not, Cummings said. They're vicious. It's really crazy. The seagulls will perch up on those poles right there, end up on the roof, and they're all like fighter jets. Maybe let's get a little of that in your algo. Like, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And they'll come in and take all the old people's food and all the children's food, he told WBZ. It's scary. We actually had a customer this year ended up getting a seagull in a headlock what? and <laughs> fling around with it. What? What? <laughs> Damn. A seagull in a headlock? That is that camp. Like, how do you get a seagull in a headlock? I'm just wondering if I'm off the hook because seagulls are going after old people now. That's fair. I, if we want to drum up some pub- publicity, we should like dress up as vigilantes. Like, we yeah. should dress up like Batman and just like go protect Castle Island. Get out of here! <laughs> yeah. Fly back up that way! <laughs> You dress as Daniel Plainview, just yeah. beating up seagulls. Fly away. No, I uh, could be. Uh, why can't I think of his name? Of course, I know fucking uh, the Baxter family. Oh, Jimmy Baxter. Jimmy Baxter. Yeah. Famously will fight a bird. Remember this? No. Fucking murdered a bird one day. Just he was pissed. It was at his house. It was like, in oh, a bird yeah, cage. in a cage. Took yeah, it yeah. outside, threw it. But then he took a golf club to it. Yeah. That was fucked up. No, I'm just more... I think that we should more just, like, yell at the birds to get away, but in a Batman way. Fly! Fly back that way! Go over there! That, Go on the beach! That, yeah, that, I mean, that is real beach behavior. Ghost you ever seen, like, a mom yelling at a at a seagull, like, trying to get at its, like, at, at her kid's chips yeah. or sandwich or something? Damn. Get, get out of here! I bladed this morning. Now I want Castle Island. Castle Island's or fucking I, awesome. Sullivan. Yeah, Castle Island's... I... 
I'm there truly like four times a yeah, week. Yeah, because that's where it's your blade spot, right? It's one of two main blade spots, but it's the it's the best one. I uh the Castle Island burger is like it reminds me of a I forget who said this, but they're completely correct. If there is like a local ice cream shop like near your town and they sell hamburgers yeah it's probably the best fucking hamburger or cheeseburger that you can get like it's not going to be good for you Mm -hmm. but it's going to taste amazing it's going to taste like like a like a genuine backyard grill burger that is just so good and castle islands burgers remind me of that last time i was there i got a grilled chicken sandwich and a water the chip boy was adulting that was a boring order yeah i always get the burger Maybe a hot dog, some crinkle fries, and a raspberry lime ricky. So that's I. I was thinking I could not tell you the last time I got a lime ricky there because I, I'm just such a fucking milkshake slash frap head. I mean, if you're blading, you you earned it. I I just don't yeah. want to be like walking around Castle Island with a milkshake in me. Right? Yeah, you can't do it pre. That's got to yeah. be your post. Yeah, I got a fucking chill though i'm trying to uh i mean everyone's always trying to to be a little more fit than they are but i've found the hey i rollerbladed and then i ate poorly it's fine that shit might have flown like (laughs) 10 years ago but your boy getting wide again. now you got to do like two good days in a row get that out of here i'm working on getting wide again you are yeah i took a took a bit of a break but i thought for a second the other day i was like do i do a personal trainer or do i just dude you don't need a personal trainer like it's it's so easy to find shit online right and just regularly break a sweat i am thinking of i you know what i'll I'll honestly do what i'll call up ted johnson and yeah, it's like, smart. Yeah. Let's work out. And he'll be fucking, he's like the most helpful, sweetest dude. And he's a friend. So he'll be like, yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, he'd probably love it. Uh, I downloaded uh, the Body Fit app mm-hmm. this this uh, this past week. And it's like, it's from bodybuilding.com. But it don't let that scare you away. Tells like, you where your body fits. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, you just take a picture of a car. Like, a yeah, room, you could probably fit in there. And be like, <laughs> I fit in that room. Yeah, your body fits there. <laughs> yeah, you're not that fat, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, Just like stand it, under it. You're good. I give it a high recommend because uh, it, it 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 like you answer a questionnaire, tell you what like you're trying to accomplish, and it'll suggest uh, workout routines for you. And you open it, and like they'll show you like instructional videos. It'll give you like tips on on what to do during the workout. And you track it on there. It's like basically a one-stop shop for everything that you would want to do fitness-wise. And uh, I'm a big fan. And it's Body like, 10, fit, huh? and it's like 10, 10 bucks a month. Damn. Hi, highly recommend. Not a bad idea. Not a bad, That was a pretty good uh, podcast read that you just I know. Did. Free ad. That's Body Fit in the App Store. Whatever. Uh, we what don't else? have an ad this week, so there you go. I, uh, I saw Oppenheimer again, by the way. Did you really? Yeah. One of my buddies was supposed to go with his wife, and then those plans changed. So me and friend of the podcast, Rich, were oh, like, okay. boys trip. I believe Rich coined it Oppenheimer, and okay. it was terrific. It yeah. was amazing. I didn't piss. Okay, wow, good for you. Even two though time, I, I... A two-time Oppenheimer piss champion? No, I pissed the first time. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you were as the strong way, as me. But so the, when we first discussed Oppenheimer, I said I pissed and came back to find that they'd bombed Japan, mm-hmm. and I thought I missed something. No, you didn't. Not only did I not miss anything, I told you I, this I when you told wondered, me the story. I was like, yeah, but I was like, did I like piss? In the like, was the movie still showing while I was <laughs> like pissing? you were trying to recall what you would have I missed? I couldn't. Fi- I think that I missed like, like one second of him talking with Benny Safty, uh, just at Los Alamos, just being when he like, was covered in the sunscreen. No, okay, that was that's like an iconic that still from good. from Oppenheimer where he's just covered in sunscreen, wearing those goofy ass sunglasses. I'm almost done with a bottle of sunscreen that I bought this summer. That feels fucking great. That's crazy. I'm I, going crazy on it. I haven't been in the sun at all this fucking summer because I've it, famously had a too. needle in me every fucking week. Yeah. I've been almost done. De- done next week. Man, it looks great. Thanks. I've been uh I've been doing tons of sun, man. I'm either blading or trying Must to be nice. live that uh, Can't go in the sun, life. can't go in the fucking pool, can't go in the ocean. 
Haven't done any summer shit. I was in the ocean the other day, and uh, I was like, is this what I think it is? Hopped back on the boat, said, oh, oh, captain, my captain, is that a jellyfish? Sure was. There was a jelly, there were like multiple jellyfish just chilling on me and didn't do anything to me. Oh, that's lucky for you, because you would have had to have uh, Chandler Bing piss on you. I told my friend, so somehow one of my friends didn't know that. And he was like, what happens if it stings you? And I was like... How do you not know that? I learned that when I was like fucking four. I honestly think it, like maybe he didn't catch that episode of Friends. <laughs> I, I learned it before Friends. Oh, really? Like, I just learned it at the I feel beach. like that's a common sitcom joke that's been Probably. made. Probably. I told I mean, him I was, somebody pissing on somebody. <laughs> it was, I, got, I got to have a great response, though. He said, what happens if it uh, pees on you? And I was like, then it's R. Kelly time. <laughs> or what happens if it stings you? And I was like, you who, pee on me, brother. Was the person who asked it, or did they grow up on the East Coast? Yes. Okay. All right. I could see you not knowing if you didn't grow up by the ocean. Yeah. Because like, well, when would that come up? I'm maybe you catch that episode of Friends. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. That's a tough one to miss. Uh, all right. Uh, wait. Question. Uh, have you listened to any of the new Carly Rae Jepsen album? No. I've I've like got like a, a like bits and pieces. Very underwhelming. It's, really? It bums me out. Is it say, out? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's out. I thought yeah. that just the loveliest too... time. It came out on it came out on Friday. Damn. Yeah. I. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to spend more time with it before I declare it's disappointing, but uh, not not great so far. That's not uh, terrific. I want to last thing. It just ties into Oppenheimer. Uh, two takeaways that I had from seeing it a second time. One, Jack Quaid is in it way more than I thought. Who's Jack Quaid? Uh, Randy Quaid's kid, or one of the Quaid's kid. He was in. Uh, he was the killer. Necessarily fam- might contain spoilers in Scream. Uh, five. I don't know. He was the the boyfriend that was like a little crazy, and you were like, "Oh, clearly it was going to be that guy." Oh you, yeah, 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 yeah. Like No, a, exactly. What you're talking he's about. He's got yeah. like just a ton of character in his face. Yes, yeah, yeah, will yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure be. Yeah. Uh, I know that this is a people don't like the term, but like he'll be a character actor for as long as he wants. Yeah. Just, who did he play in Oppenheimer? Was, oh, is he the uh the one of the, the, the desk guy? Uh, shit. Who is he? He's he's just he's one of the uh, physicists. Oh, okay. One of the guys that's hanging around and doing stuff. There's just so many people in that movie. Uh, confirmed too much Einstein, more <laughs> uh, Quaid than I thought. Uh, yeah, but man, the Casey Einstein, Affleck the Einstein, not great in it. The Einstein memes are awesome. The my favorite one is uh, leaning over to my girlfriend. That's Einstein. Yeah, <laughs> yeah too much Einstein, but. Uh, the Einstein part at the end did strike a chord with me where he says, like, hey, once they've, like, pilloried you, they will, they'll let time pass and they'll throw you a party. They'll give you a, a ribbon or a medal. It just means you're done. And, they, it, it, they, and it won't be about you. It won't be for you. It'll be for them. And seeing that after Sinead O'Connor died and right before Paul Rubens died. I was like, I've, I've just been thinking about that line because it is so true. People were so fucking me. I was raised to think that Sinead O'Connor was like a bad person because she tore a picture of the Pope on SNL. And I didn't know what that means. But the people that were teaching me stuff were like, that's really bad. So she's crazy. And even as recently as a couple of years ago, remember when she was like, Miley yo, Cyrus, Miley Cyrus, man. take care of yourself, girl. And Miley Cyrus was like, <laughs> like, I'm going to listen to you fucking weirdo yeah and then the poll that was so weird that went on for so long too the yeah. Miles Cyrus stuff there was like fucking four chapters of that it was just like just stop fighting on the internet i recently saw the flowers com- uh, uh music video for the first time yeah great haven't, music video haven't seen it but miley cyrus rocks she's great she's beautiful the video is Incredible awesome voice and then uh paul rubens same sort of thing there was just this cloud over him mm. and i read up on him and i was like he was just a fucking freak he wasn't a fucking child pornography guy. I, I mean, like, I, you don't know that for sure. Oh, we don't know that for sure, but we don't know that for sure. But hey, but like, right? But like, there was he had like, unless I, I misread stuff I, and I like double checked. Uh, you you maybe did more research than I did, but like when I read it, like they they found like images of like teens that like he said weren't sexual in nature, but they were naked. Like, uh, yeah, like that's mm, weird to me. Okay, so if that's... So, There's then- some gray area where it's like he was he was definitely like like, like a weird sex yeah, yeah, nudity right. guy, what a porn guy, whatever you want to say, but like it may... I don't know if he was like... Like a kid, like a pedophile, but I think that he he was in possession of some materials that were like a little 
probably shouldn't have been in possession of. Okay, well, that's bad. But he probably and had so much fucking porn. So that, that, like, that so that's what he said, and he so he did. He had a, an absolute shitload of stuff, and he was like, uh, please think of me whatever you want, but like, re, but and obviously a pedophile would say this, like, don't make right. it about the kids stuff. Yeah, yeah. But he was like, I did read I, that. I am like a fucking freak's freak. Yeah, and right. Whatever. I don't know, like, when... Not that these are the same, but like when little Richard died, everyone was like, ha, 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 that guy was fucking nuts, huh? Rest in peace, King. <laughs> uh, and but, I, I, I feel bad that I maybe without uh, knowing anything about it, we're just like, oh, yeah, Paul Rubens, horrible fucking guy. Keep that guy away from me. I don't know if I thought he was I don't know if I ever thought that he was a horrible fucking guy. And I don't know if I ever knew that, like, he had child porn stuff like obviously the the thing that I, that has been attached to him is masturbating in the movie theater. Yeah. Like, that's the big thing that I've always been like, oh, disgraced Pee Wee Herman jacked off in a movie theater. It was an adult theater. It was an adult theater, which, uh, what was the, I just heard a, a joke recently. Oh, I watched, I, I watched Jury Duty. Oh, You ever good. watched Jury, Jury yeah. Duty? You watch Jury Duty? Yeah. Where, I did, when they bring the, the, the reason the wi- I didn't watch, uh, Andor is because you weren't watching oh, Jury Duty. Okay, That's yeah. why that happened. I, I, I blew through Jury Duty this yeah. week. Very fucking funny. It's and that guy is the best. Yeah. Uh, but no, when, when they bring the witness to the character witness to the stand, yeah. and you find out that he jerked off in a movie theater and it wasn't, it was to Pacific Rim. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. That was such a <laughs> funny show. And all the fail safes that they had. Uh, was it you that said? Uh, what were they going to do if they if he said yes to being the right. the, the bouncer? The, so they said. I think that there's like. Yeah, a, did I got, you watch that long episode at the end? No, no uh, but I did get some responses on Twitter giving me the answer, which was like they would have he would have chickened out. They had a right. They, they really did have a plan for everything, but even so, at so many different points, it could have gone wrong. That all could have gone yeah. to shit. I you lo- break character once, yeah. and like you tank everything. The pre. <laughs> I, I watched like the um the like the final episode or whatever it was. I don't know if that's the same one that you're talking about, but like the, they were like, yeah, we were on fucking pins and needles the whole time because Must have been so stressful. Yeah, dude, so stressful not knowing where it's gonna go and knowing that if you break character or you say the wrong thing, like you're tanking the whole operation. And Marsden got nominated for an Emmy because of it, which is just amazing. Really? I didn't know that. I believe he did. Let me see. Uh, That's crazy. <laughs> That's hilarious. James Marsden. Emmy. Uh, yeah. Outstanding supporting actor in a comedy That's series. That's awesome. Totally deserved. <laughs> That's Loved awesome. It. All right. Talk soon. Bye.